Amari Parker averaging 18-8 a game and nearly nine rebounds per game, but it's been a terrific year for Rodney Hood. Eighth in the league in scoring at 16.3 points per game. He's also the second best three-point shooter in the ACC. Now, a big difference between the last time these two teams met and tonight, Cody Miller McIntyre didn't play. He averages over 13 points per game. He was injured and didn't play at Cameron, but he is back tonight. And there's Travis McKay on senior night trying to wrap up what has been a magnificent career here at Wake Forest, but Fonz McKay as a senior has seen his numbers dip as he's had to play a lot of small forward this season. That's not his natural position. Yeah, not his natural. He's better down in the low post area, but in this game, he's got to be attack-minded and get to the offensive glass. For Wake Forest, this was a season with plenty of promise about five weeks ago, but they have gone one and eight in their last nine and it's kind of all falling apart. But tonight's game gets off to a good start for the senior, Makai, as he hits the three. He's such a steady veteran. They need point production tonight from him if they're going to beat Duke on their home floor. You see this team play. They'll mix up the defenses, play a little man, go into a zone to try to keep this potent offense of Duke off balance. They get a deflection with 13 to shoot. Here's Parker trying to tie the game. Can't do it. Rebound tipped by Jefferson. Parker's got it. That rolls off the rim, and it will still stay with Duke as it's knocked out of bounds by Adalamoto. Well, and that's an area that I feel Jabari Parker's really improved in. He hasn't shot a lot of threes as he did earlier in the conference season. And as a result, his point production has gone up. He struggled a little bit in the middle part of this conference season. Parker got to the baseline, and a foul called on Devin Thomas. I'd like to see him continue to attack off the bounce tonight, Parker, to take advantage of the quickness that he has on the inside. He's such a bull down low. Plays like Carmelo Anthony when he catches the basketball close to the basket. High praise if you're comparing him to the score that Carmelo Anthony is. Only in the post. <laughs> <laughs> Suleiman, that's short. And at times, Duke has a tough time getting back in good transition defensive balance. I think this team, Wake Forest, can attack them off the bounce on misses and makes. Miller McIntyre came up short. That was knocked out of bounds, but it will go over to the Blue Devils, who had a three-shot trip their first time down the floor and missed all three. like what Blake's doing here. Again, they're playing that little 2-3 zone and they're passing off cutters on the backside. They're gonna have to watch out for three-point shots, though, because Duke can knock them down. Tyler. Ten, ten made three-point shots a game in conference play. Tyler Thornton's pass was knocked away, and a little old-school scoop won't go for Miller McIntyre. And another whistle that sends it back Duke's way. Well, Mike Krzyzewski, of course, the most wins in NCAA history, and only Jim Beheim has won more games at a single school than Coach K. Four national championships, 11 Final Fours, and a team that heading towards the NCAA tournament might have about as big a scope of possible success or failure as any team in what will ultimately be the field of 68. Yeah, and partly they don't have a rim protector inside. We talked about the impact of Zubik back in 2010. They're hoping that Marshall Plumlee can begin to impact the game as he did for that national championship run. Timeout called by Karan Williams. So we'll step aside for just a moment and come right back to Wake Forest. Every day. Duke has missed their first four field goal attempts. As a result, Wake has the early lead. And for Jeff Bezdelic, he has seen this fourth season here in Winston-Salem fall apart around him. And now there are rumors about his job security. Yeah, and I think that really impacted his team in the last game that they played. They just weren't quite focused and playing with the kind of zeal that I'm accustomed to from Wake Forest. Arno William Adalamoto scores inside, and Wake's got the 5 0 lead. And there are those opportunities that he'll be able to get to the offensive board. He's a tremendous offensive rebounder inside for Wake. I think they have to attack this area, but I'd like to see Rodney Hood or Parker get it in that ACC area because they're playmakers. Tyler Thornton turns it over, and that's news. In his last 10 games, Tyler Thornton has 32 assists against only four turnovers. He started nine straight games as well, as Quinn Cook has been
at least in terms of starting games, demoted by Mike Krzyzewski, although he kind of took umbrage when we talked to him before the game at the idea that Quinn Cook's role has been reduced. That's right. Tyler Thornton has really been dropping dimes over the last two games, 10 assists over the last two. That's the kind of production that Duke needs from him. Hood got the steal, but threw it to no man's land. It's run down by Adalamoto, so it is a fresh shot clock for Wake Forest. With Parker guarding number two, Devin Thomas, I think they got to throw that basketball inside and take advantage of that mismatch and try to get some fouls on Parker. Well, that time the foul was called on Emil Jefferson. They have him inside. He had inside position, but they missed him. See, I think they have to flash him to that weak side to allow Devin Thomas to get some touches. Parker has it knocked away. And Karan Williams not only believes he got a clean strip, but yeah. that the ball went off of Jabari Parker yeah. and should belong to Wake Forest. And it looks like they've I got a case. Too. Yeah, I thought he got a nice little strip, and I thought it bounced off of his chest out of bounds. That should be Wake Forest basketball. So Pat Driscoll, who was there to make the call, was right about one half of the call. It was a clean block. Yeah. But that should belong to Wake Forest. Duke off to a very slow start offensively. Another miss by Parker. Fresh off the bench, Marshall Plumley, And he'll go to the line to try and get the Duke Blue Devils on the board. Marshall Plumley, big athletic post player inside. He plays so hard, gives them such tremendous energy inside. I said earlier, I think he has the potential to become to this team what Brian Zubak was to the 2010 team, a rim protector, giving them some physicality on the interior. Well, Marshall Plumley barely played for two years. Mm -hmm. He had a redshirt season, then a broken foot that hampered him all through last year. That required surgery at the end of the season. So those that have watched Duke basketball this year know that Plumley, in spite of not much in the statistical columns, has become a more important player as the year's gone on. Yeah, in 16 minutes, he's averaging four points, six rebounds, and two blocked shots over the last three. And again, that's the kind of production that they need from the center position if they're hoping to win another national championship. Devin Thomas, number two in gold, still hasn't had a touch on that low post. He's got a quickness advantage against Plumley. I think Wake Forest got to get him the rock. Adama Moto hits a three. And Wake Forest has the six-point lead. He doesn't shoot a lot of them. That's his fifth made three on the year. This zone has really gotten Duke a little bit out of sorts offensively. This is who needs the basketball in the half court. Jabari Parker will go to the line when we come back. Duke's still without a field goal. Wake Forest has a couple of triples. They've got the Stealer. And new axe piece. Make love, not war. Back in Wake Forest, Bob Oshuzum, Alfonso Ellis. It's the Demon Deacons off to the good start. And let's take a look at the first made three by Alamoto this season. Beautiful ball screen by Devin Thomas, and it's a little roll replace action. He's going to roll down low. And Adalamoto is going to come over here, and he finds him wide open. Miscommunication there by Duke, and that's something that's really hurt this Duke defense all year long. Miscommunication that's led to some open shots. Beautiful execution by Wake Forest. It's a pretty good-looking stroke for a guy that was 0 for 6 from 3 before he knocked <laughs> that one down. I tell you what, there's something about playing on your home floor. Got a pretty nice turnout out here. And it's a little different watching the game from, what are we, 15, 20 rows up? Looks a little bit delayed, even though we're only 20, 20 rows away. There's still better seats than I'm used to. <laughs> Most places I get invited to. You get the Euchre seats? If that. <laughs> so Duke's still without a field goal. But they've cut the lead to four. Love it. Nice lob inside. Unable to hit. Right on the doorstep was Tyler Cavanaugh. You can't, and it's knocked out of bounds. It'll stay with Wake. Can't miss those inside. Tyler Cavanaugh, more of a stretch four. He can score on the post for them, but he can really knock the three-point shot down. He's going to have to focus and really concentrate. At his size, he's got to dunk that basketball inside at 6'9".
Devin Thomas, number two in gold, has to get a touch. Instead, Kavanaugh steps outside, and it's run down by Parker. So far, Wake Forest doing a really nice job of getting back in defensive transition balance, taking away that initial thrust that could be so lethal by the Blue Devils. Plumlee with the first bucket for Duke. A bullet pass thrown by Hood. Makai tried to split the double team, couldn't do it. Quinn Cook down to the deck, has it, looks to call a timeout, and now it's taken back by Noah McIntyre, who throws it down. The indecision on the floor, whether to call timeout or to make the pass, is what hurt Duke on that play. Good for three. That's a brick. Suleiman found the loose ball, but it's taken back. Miller McIntyre then fouled by Suleiman. Look at the scramble on the floor. I think you got to call a timeout in that situation. Too many gold shirts around the basketball, and the alert Cody Miller McIntyre sends it in. They really missed his presence. Cody Miller McIntyre didn't play the first time these two teams played. He brings an additional on ball defender as well as a guy who can handle the basketball against Duke's tough pressure. Didn't it look like Cook tried to call a timeout? Looked like he wrapped his arms around the ball and tried to signal for a timeout, but it wasn't granted. He did make a little motion, but I don't think it was clear to the referees. Yeah, we're up high enough that it's hard sometimes to see from this angle whether or not he said something. Mm -hmm. McIntyre from deep. He's got a long two. What a start for Wake Forest. Wake Forest needs Cody Miller McIntyre to play well. He's really their go-to guy. Plays both one and two for the Demon Deacons. Nice. Ball movement, but no good from the corner for three for Andre Dawkins. This is where Cody Miller McIntyre is at his best. Nice little screen there, and he realizes he has an advantage against a much taller Jabari Parker. Gives him a little hesitation, a little step. Forced Parker to go back and then raised and knocked it down. They're going to need that kind of consistent effort from Cody Miller McIntyre if they're hoping to beat Duke tonight. Big Forest is five for ten. Duke is one for eight. And that is two free throws coming for Karan Williams. With Jabari Parker now on the bench. He was replaced by Emil Jefferson. Bob, I think at times what's hurt Duke is when, when dribble penetration is taking place, they're too late on the weak side. When you want to come and help, you have to be early. And because they're so late, it usually leads to a basket or a foul, as it did on that possession. ESPN brings you another Thursday night showcase doubleheader tomorrow night at 7. We'll start with a big one in the American. Memphis and Sean Kilpatrick and the Bearcats waiting. And then at 9, Iowa will take on Michigan State. The Thursday night showcase presented by Reese's Peanut Butter Cups. That's tomorrow night, also live on Watch ESPN. We talked to earlier earlier about when you take him out of the offense, Sean Kilpatrick, where do they go to get points? And I think that's going to hurt them in the AAC tournament, and it could hurt them in the NCAA tournament as well. And they struggle to score. Yes. See, Bob, I really think they have to get Duke a playmaker, a Rodney Hood, a Jabari Parker at that free throw line area to break down the zone. This zone is really giving them problems, and it shouldn't against a team that shoots the long ball as well as they do. Hood set up Cook, and now a triple rattles home for the Blue Devils. A little dribble drive, drawing two defenders, and nice replace action there to knock down the three ball. Kavanaugh bodies up with the left hand, able to finish. What Kavanaugh does, he gives them such a tremendous lift off the bench with his ability to knock down the long ball and can score it in the paint as well. He averages nine a game, 13 games in double figures. Hood with a nice shot fake, mid-range jumper, rolls off. Plumley on the offensive glass, sends it back up, that won't go. Emil Jefferson kicks it back outside, cut for three. That's off the heel, another chance for the Blue Devils. Leaning in and scoring is Andre Dawkins.
Duke really doing a nice job of chasing after those loose balls. They've been dominant on the offensive glass. It hasn't led to a whole lot of point production, but they've been active on the glass early. Nice high low action. Kavanaugh again, blocked. Jefferson, second time, called for the foul. So Kavanaugh to shoot free throws when we come back. Well, it has been an eventful season in the ACC. At times, spectacular. For NC State's team, who, by the way, is one under 500 with an opportunity to get to 500 this year. You don't have a team. He's their scoring leader, and he's a guy before going in the pit. Three games, he was averaging 29 points a game, dropped 41 on pit at pit. I think T.J. Warren deserves to be the player of the year. All right, you're off your rocker. If you take Jabari Parker off of this team, mm -hmm. where are they? Number two in the league in score. Yes. Number one in rebounding. Number three in field goal percentage. And you can make an argument playing out of position. He's a small forward. Certainly projects in the NBA as a small forward. He plays the five He's at times four. for Duke. He's a four. Again, how do you define it? Well, here, here's your four man outside <laughs> handling the ball outside the three-point line. He's a four with ball handling ability and shooting ability. Well, your, three. your newcomer of the year, Rodney Hood, barely draws iron. Yeah. And those, Wake Forest trying to add to their lead. Those two guys combined now are for six from the field. Force is going. That should be a foul. That's a push there by Tyler Thornton. And now the secondary call made as Tyler Thornton does pick up the foul. Watch this one. He basically chucks him. That's the arm bar. I mean, that's the, that's yeah. the definition of the arm bar. You're not yeah. supposed to, with the freedom of movement rules this year, exactly. be able to use. I'll tell you what, Duke has not been able to guard the ball screen action Wake Forest. I'd like to see them continue with it. They've been able to get some good looks at the basket off that ball screen action. Nice. A block inside, but a foul called as Adama Moto will go to the free throw line. Good help coming from Andre Dawkins, but was not able to watch, get the clean block. Watch him establish the position inside, but I love what Jeff Bizdelic is doing as he's raising everyone else up on the weak side, so you're wondering, how is that pass getting there? There's no one within 25 feet of the receiver inside. Great play call by Jeff Bizdelic. One of the greatest rivalries in college sports headlines, a doubleheader on Saturday. First at six, we begin in the Big Ten with the Wolverines taking on Indiana. Then at nine, part two of the rivalry in college basketball. North Carolina Duke at nine Eastern. Saturday primetime presented by DirecTV. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. How good has Nick Stauskas been this year for Michigan? At times early in the season, they, they were able to I, just guard up against him to keep him from getting open looks. But over the last couple of weeks, he's been able to get some nice looks at the basket and been knocking him down. And I think you can still make an argument that Karis LeVert's their best player. Indeed. Hood, this time with the ball fake inside and scores. And Bob, that's what we talked about earlier against that 2 3 zone. You have to get one of your playmakers at that free throw line position, and they'll be able to either score a basket or make one for a teammate. Nice execution there by Rodney Hood. Dalamoto spins out of a double team to the corner. A wide open three is an air ball from Miles Overton. Here comes the no-brainer ACC player of the year, Jabari Parker. Off to Suleiman for three. Actually, they'll call that a long two, but the signal is they'll check it at the table when they get a chance. Well, and that's partly Duke's identity. If you miss a shot and you miss it long, they have tremendous wings who can really get out and finish in transition. Foul on Parker. I slipped in the little no-brainer ACC player of the year. I got no Alfonso <laughs> Ellis reaction. You got no love. <laughs> But I tell you, that's where they can be so explosive, Bob. You take a long, bad shot, they are terrific at pushing that thing. All their guards really rush it quickly up the floor, and your defense is designed to get back to the painted area and stop the basketball. But when you do it, their three-point shooters fan out, and they do a nice job of knocking it down from the three. That foul on Jabari Parker was his first, but already Duke with seven fouls here in the first half. So it's Tyler Cavanaugh, who was a three-time state champion in high school up in DeWitt, New York, playing 
basically in suburban Syracuse, mm -hmm. but ends up down here at Wake Forest with a pair at the line. Well, Syracuse recruited him, and it was between here and Wake Forest, but he decided to come here during the summers. He still works out at the Syracuse facilities. This is where I think Parker needs to get a touch. Instead, it's Suleiman open. No good. Tyler Thornton fell down, so it's numbers the other way for Wake Forest. Ball movement set up over to the passes on the three. That was the same spot he just shot an air ball from, so maybe thought better of it. And now an Aaron entry pass intended for Adala Moto becomes a turnover. Well, you got to credit Duke's defense on that push. They had numbers Wake Forest, but Duke doing a really nice job of sprinting back to the painted area and building out, taking away that initial thrust. Well, you, you talked in the one-on-one -on -one about how you thought Wake would be able to, at times, victimize Duke if they overplay you defensively. Parker can't score. Second effort is good. Have you seen that aggressive defense? from Duke here in the first half, or is that an adjustment made by Mike Krzyzewski well, well, they, meeting number one? That's a great point. And they've not been able to take advantage of it on the wings, Wake Forest, but what they've done is anytime Duke is overplaying on the high side in the post, they've been able to take advantage of it by throwing it over the top. Well, there's a steal. Cook pulls up for three. Another miss. And the tip ends up with Kavanaugh. Got numbers, Wake Forest. Three, two. two. Overton gives it up. Jones. I'll tell you what, Wake Forest has come out and played with a tremendous amount of heart in this basketball game, but they have to be careful. It was 28-28 at Duke, and then Duke went on an eight-point run fueled by Rodney Hood. Well, Duke is one of seven shooting the three, but they go down low to Jabari Parker, and he makes it look easy. The one possession game. Here's Miller McIntyre. Too strong. And Bob, I think Duke needs to do more of that. When they're kind of struggling, I think Jabari Parker can take anyone in the country off the low box. They've got to get him the basketball. Offensive foul called on Parker. That's his second. Three on two in transition. Forced the first player to step up. And how about that move? Wow, Michael. Now in Dallas, some scores from other games. UConn in stores with a four-point lead of Rutgers. That game over on the U. And somewhat of an NCAA elimination game here in Indiana. Nebraska leading Indiana 23-15. And guys, if we're going to be talking about player of the year in the ACC and their impact with the team, how about Clemson's K.J. McDaniels? The Tigers got ten wins. It's all McDaniels. Wow. Sean Farnham weighing in with what has to be a dark horse pick at best. I, I had such great respect for that guy. And <laughs> Until by the way, now. <laughs> and by the way, Connor's got the coolest glasses on the planet. Beautiful. In the posts, it's Travis McKay scoring as Lafonso Ellis is going to spend the next seven minutes destroying the ACC Player of the Year pick of Sean Farnham. <laughs> Just kidding, <get> Sean. <laughs> I like KJ McDaniels. He killed Notre Dame earlier in the year. Nice. Rodney Hood is able to finish. By the way, the officials did go to the scorer's table while we were away. You might remember that toe on the line, not on the line call that they were going to take a look at from Rashid Suleiman and determine that it was a long two. So the score was correct when we went to break. Williams, there's a three. The Robert Morris senior transfer knocks down a triple, and it's a six-point Lake Forest advantage. He's been a great addition to this team, a guy who can really stick the long ball, and he's given it some veteran leadership as a fifth-year senior. But Duke's been really good when they've been driving the basketball. I'd like to see them continue. Nicely done there. Rodney Hood does just that. Yeah. Because yeah. what happens is when, you, when you're playing against a 2-3 zone, you almost fall into that lull of taking the perimeter jump shot. They're too good off the bounce not to take advantage. A crack of daylight for Miller McIntyre, and there's Mackay keeping the play alive and drawing a foul.
these are those miscues that Duke has had a lot this year. On a guy like that, you cannot try to shoot the gap. Beautiful read on the bump by Karan, and he knocks it down from three. You have to make sure that you stay connected to a shooter that way. You give them, much, give them that much space that allows them to read to get to the open area. Excellent done, excellently done by Karan Williams. And a little bit of foul trouble now for Mike Krzyzewski. Rashid Suleiman just picking up his second. So Suleiman, Emil Jefferson, and Jabari Parker all have two each. Mm -hmm. The inability to contain the dribble drive, and they've been allowing Wake Forest to get to the offensive backboard. That's gotten them into foul trouble. All three of those players are now on the bench. So Matt Jones coming on, as Duke probably going a little bit deeper into their bench than maybe they expected to have to, down six. Nice. Went good with the left hand. That was created by Marshall Plum Plumley, number 40 in blue, sealing on the inside. Akai in rhythm, sends a three up, offensive rebound, an old school flip from Devin Thomas won't go. And like a fullback, Marshall Plumley protects the ball. So I think Rodney Hood's gonna have to carry the offense, got away with the travel on that one. I think Rodney Hood's gonna have to carry the offense with Jabari Parker out of the basketball game right now. That was a little travel over there, Bob. I think more than a little. Mm -hmm. I think the Wake bench agreed with you as Tyler <laughs> Kavanaugh is called for the foul. But for Jeff Bidzelic's team, this might be one of those mark the tape moments in the game. You've got Suleiman Parker and Emil Jefferson all out. Matt Jones on the floor. Marshall Plumley, who's been better of late, mm -hmm. but it's not really a big scoring threat on the floor. Tyler Thornton only averages three points a game. Right. You've got a four-point lead. What would you, if you're Jeff Bedzelic, think the lead might be by halftime if that group stays on the bench for a while? Well, they're going to have to take advantage of a few of the mismatches that they have out there on the floor, too, because we talked about Travis McKay at 6'7". There's no one really out there amongst the guards who can guard him, so let's see if he takes advantage of it. But Quinn Cook doing a really nice job of denying creating that turnover right there, something that Wake Forest can ill afford to do against Duke. 19 turnovers, Bob, in the first first game led to 26 points off those turnovers for Duke. That's their sixth turnover here in the first half, and Rodney Hood has a cut. So he heads over to the bench, and while we've got a moment, let's tell you about a primetime NBA doubleheader on Friday night on ESPN. First at 7, it's Zach Randolph and the Grizzlies heading to Chicago to meet the Bulls, and then at 9.30, Two powerhouses collide. The Pacers will take on Dwight Howard and the Rockets. What a year Houston is at. Mm -hmm. NBA Friday presented by State Farm. Both games also live on Watch ESPN. Speaking the Rockets are an interesting team. Yeah, yeah, and you're talking about the Bulls and the impact that Joaquin Noah has had. Both guys from Florida. Chandler Parsons, I think, is the unsung hero for Houston. Knocks down the three ball. is terrific in transition. Has become a much better on-ball defender as well. Good for three. Won't go. Also play. Nice tip in the corner by Matt Jones. Hood has another chance. That's no good. Long rebound. Hood's got it back. Hooked away from behind. And here's a break the other way for Miller McIntyre. Fouled by Hood and he'll go to the line. That's the first foul on Rodney Hood. Yeah, both guys, everyone getting after the basketball. How about the outlet pass beautifully done? Devin Thomas, number two in gold, hasn't been involved in this game on the offensive end, but he's been making some nice effort plays for Wake Forest. If I would have told you before the game that Duke would be 10 for 26 from the field, one for nine from three, and they'd have Parker, Jefferson, and Suleiman all on the bench in foul trouble, what would you think the score might be? Well, offensively, it's weird for me to see Duke struggling against the 2-3 zone with the shooters that they have. It clearly took them out of sync in the first five minutes of this game. They weren't able to recover. They finally started on the ball reversal to drive the low forward who was stepping up, and it created some nice opportunities, but they got away from that, and the hustle game, Wake Forest, has won tonight. Two misses at the line, and that has also been a problem for Wake Forest this year. They only shoot 64% as a team at the free throw line. They're second in the ACC in most free throws per game attempted. They get to the line, they just can't make them. Yeah, and if you look at many of the guys, they shoot it with good form, so it comes down to confidence. They certainly get their reps in. I'll tell you what, this, this is a critical time 
for Wake Forest. As Rodney Hood knocks down the J, up one. When they were tied at Duke, Duke went on an 18-1 run to finish the half, and they did it by turning Wake Forest over. And Wake Forest is going to have to be careful and make sure that they're taking care of the basketball and getting good looks on the offensive end. Nine points now for Rodney Hood as the B unit for Duke has tightened this game to a one-point Wake Forest advantage. Active again, Matt Jones knocks it out of bounds. The Duke bench loves the hustle of, of their bench players. It's only a one-point game. The biggest party in college basketball. Thanks very much. 3.55 to go in the first half of what is now a one-point game. Bob Ashusa, Alfonso Ellis. Here in Winston-Salem, and it's been the bench for Duke that has tightened the game with their stars out. Rashid Suleiman, Jabari Parker, both with a couple of fouls. And another turnover off the inbound after the timeout. And you made a great point. We were talking at the timeout is when you have a team's best players on the bench in foul trouble, that's the time to extend the lead. But it's been the hustle plays by Duke, the ability to attack off the bounce and get to the offensive glass. And Rodney Hood has been terrific over the last two minutes. And Mike Krzyzewski apparently has no problem staying with that same group of five. There's another walk there. Thornton, no good from the corner. Duke stays ice cold from three. They're now one for ten here in the first half. And Bob, again, with this group on the floor for Duke, I am surprised that Wake Forest is really not attacking them off the bounce. They've been really passively moving the basketball around the horn. Devin Thomas with a brick. And I think he's got to get to the basket. Rodney Hood down the lane. And a blocking foul is called on Thomas. Bob, we talked about that earlier with Devin Thomas. He has a speed advantage, a foot speed advantage on any of the bigs that Duke would throw at him. He's not been aggressively attacking the basket that I've seen him do all season long. And if they want to win this basketball game, he's going to have to be a lot more aggressive when he gets the basketball in his hands. Rodney Hood has about a third of his team's points here in the first half, now in double figures. Watch when he catches it. You know, do I attack? Don't I attack? And for a guy, he can make that shot, but that's not his strength. His, his strength is attacking you off the bounce, especially going to his left. So now Devin Thomas will sit down as Hood has 11. And Duke takes the lead. The first lead of the night for Duke, and it's been the bench that has done the job with Suleiman Parker and Emil Jefferson all in foul trouble. Williams, catch and shoot. No good. Cook shovels one off to Fort, who thought about a three, and now backs it out. And Duke has to continue to get the basketball into Rodney Hood's hands. Wake Forest has not had an have, have not had an answer for him when he's gotten it. Cook slips one to Hood. Now back to Cook for three. Got it. Timeout called by Wake Forest. It's a four-point Duke lead. Cook hit the three, but this 10-0 run for Duke, a lot to do with Rodney Hood. The Mississippi State transfer recognizing how critical this game is and the moment has been taking off the bounce. He's so versatile. He can knock down the three ball, but I love the fact that they're giving it to him around that ACC area. He's too quick and jumps too high when he's attacking the basket. Wake Forest has no one who could contend defensively with Rodney Hood. Wake has no field goals in the last four minutes, and Rodney Hood at one point had nine of 11 during a stretch for Duke until Cook hit that three. Rodney Hood's only the third sophomore ever to be named a captain at Duke. Wow. Josh McRoberts, Greg Paulus were the other two. And he's the first player ever to be named a captain under Mike Krzyzewski without having yet played a game for Duke, because, of course, he's the Mississippi State transfer. Now, he's had a terrific collegiate year, but I think he's going to be an excellent pro. 6'8", I think he can guard one through three. He can run the floor, puts it down. 
I really like his play. Adalamoto leans in, no good. Back tap ends up with Williams. Williams with a floater in the lane that rattles home. Got to give Wake Forest a lot of credit. They've been really battling on the offensive glass. Jones on the curl. And he'll go to the line. Almost a chance for a three-point play. Tyler Cavanaugh called for his second. Matt Jones doesn't score a whole lot for Duke, but he's a guy that comes off the bench. He's an aggressive defender. He looks to run the offense, but I love the read he made coming off that screen. Recognized that his man was trailing, and that's the perfect time to make that curl cut. Beautiful read by Matt Jones. As soon as we're done, we'll head out west. Colorado and Stanford. Coming up next, that's an important game for both of those teams, both at 9-7, and seven, tied for fourth in the Pac-12 and trying to put their resumes together for Selection Sunday. Miller McIntyre muscles one up and in. The help defense was there initially, but with the hesitation dribble and the back dribble, now everyone ran back to their men on the weak side, which opened up that gap for him to attack the rim. There's plenty of blue in the stands here, but those last couple of buckets got the fans in gold back into the game as we're now tied at 33. Hood can't hit. Williams, tough shot. Offensive rebound, the putback won't go for Makai. A foul, though, is called on Hood. I think that's going to be on Tyler Cavanaugh. I thought he pushed off to create some airspace to get the offensive rebound. Now, they'll actually call it on Marshall Plumley. Watch this. Oh, wow. Okay. Grabbed his arm and had him all wrapped up. And again, we talked about our view angle. It looked like. <laughs> it looked like Kavanaugh pushed him off. Tyler Kavanaugh, an 80% free throw shooter, but misses the first of two. As Duke now has 10 team fouls here in the first half. Matt Jones to the bench. Andre Dawkins comes back in. Karan Williams will go to the bench for Wake as Madison Jones comes back on. We talked about it earlier, the inability of Wake Forest to knock down free throws, and they get there often. You talk about a team that has very little margin to begin with. You have to be able to make your free throws if you're hoping to get a big win on your home floor. Mike Krzyzewski will use his use-it-or-lose-it timeout with a little over a half minute to go in the first half, and Wake Forest now back on top by a point. If I were to ask you, Lafonso Ellis, about Duke, yes, as we move towards the end lineup against Maryland that year, he had 17 rebounds. They went up, went on to win the national championship. He gave them aggressive play on the interior. He was great defensively blocking shots. If Marshall Plumley can become that for Duke, Duke would have a chance to get to a Final Four. Well, conversely, let me ask you this: Duke this year gets knocked out in the second round. Why? The inability to contain the dribble drive. So it kind of depends on their draw oh, yeah. and the guards they're looking at when the bracket comes out. Well, because you look at the mid-majors, all the mid-majors have great guards. Right. They just don't have bigs. And if you can't contain the dribble drive, now all of a sudden you can beat everyone. Florida Gulf Coast showed that last year. And Duke doesn't have the bigs necessarily to take advantage of a lack of size Correct. for one of those mid-major teams. Correct. It'd be really interesting when the brackets come out to see what Duke's looking at. He's now down to five seconds on the shot clock. Quinn Cook probing with three to shoot as his pocket picks. Miller McIntyre lays it in to beat the halftime buzzer. It's only the second time this season that Duke has trailed at 
halftime. It was at Syracuse last time that the Blue Devils trailed at the break, but they trail here at Wake Forest by three. Well, Wake Forest has been so scrappy. They got off to a great lead. Duke was able to chip back into it, but their ability to track down 50-50 balls and get on the offensive glass is what allowed them to be able to hang around. Look at this nifty steal. Throw it out and able to get an easy one in transition. Addison Jones got the steal. Miller McIntyre the finish. It's time for Chris Cotter. Salem just about set for the start of the second half. It's a three-point lead for Wake Forest. Bob was choosing alongside Lafonso Ellis. And Duke down by only three Fonz in spite of the fact that they were two for 12 from three in the first half. When they're not knocking down their shots, it's so important that they start to get points in the paint. Digger Phelps, 18 points in the paint. And I thought they did a nice job of attacking that 2-3 zone. Started to get it into the middle to Rodney Hood. And when he could get in there, they go to work. And they did a nice job of penetrating it from the top, forcing it to collapse and some nice kicks. They were able to get on the offensive glass as well. A couple of run-out opportunities excellently done. But on the other side, for Wake Forest, it was important that they come out and try to dominate the toughness areas, doing a nice job of diving for 50-50 balls. And when they needed to get an additional possession, they were on the offensive glass playing tough and hard. And if they want to win this basketball game, it's going to be plays like this. Getting out in transition and the finish. Got to continue to scrap if you're Wake Forest. Well, Duke had some foul trouble in the first half to deal with. Suleiman, Parker, and Jefferson all with two fouls apiece. They'll obviously start the second half with Parker and Suleiman on the floor, and Jabari Parker goes right to work. It's a one-point game. Nicely done. North Carolina State runs that play. Marshall Plumley, a little, little screen action on the baseline and allows the low side runner to come off. Jabari Parker pops into the crease and able to score one inside for the 50 Devils. Adela Moto can't answer. Second try. That's good. That's one of those hustle points that we talked about. Scrapping on the interior, trying to come up with second chance opportunities. Wake Forest has been really good in the hustle point area tonight. Nice ball movement. Suleiman for three. In, out, and right back in again. And that's an area that Duke struggled in earlier in this game against that 2-3 zone. They were unwilling to attack it at that free throw line area or throw it in the post. When you can throw it inside, usually create something good outside. Nice execution by Duke. Rebound, rebound, rebound. Off the glass. The soft tip for Devin Thomas is good. And that puts Wake Forest back on top. Well, Duke is so, they have so aggressively helped on dribble penetration. It opens up those opportunities for weak side offensive rebounds. Wake Forest is really taking advantage in this game. Rodney Hood swishes one from three. And a quick timeout call. We'll step aside and come right back. Duke on top by a point. Susan Lafonso Ellis back on Wednesday night hoops. Rodney Hood gives Duke the lead. Lafonso takes us inside the play. Let's take a look at this. This is beautiful execution against the zone. Watch the ball reversal as he comes back to 14. Now all of a sudden you have to come up and help. That's Makai. Now all of a sudden too long of a run on the inside for Devin Thomas. And that's, you can't do that with Rodney Hood because he has such a high release point. They will drill you from the three-point line. Beautiful execution by Duke against the zone. And then a drive that won't go for Makai. Jabari Parker back the other way. Rodney Hood and Suleiman in the first half combined for 0 for 6 for 3 as Plumlee can't flush the miss. 5 on 2 Hood. Numbers the other way. And a blocking foul is called on Hood. And that will put Devin Thomas at the free throw line. Uh, Devin Thomas did a really nice job because you want to continue to drive that basketball until the first player engages you. Hood stayed back in that restricted area, which allowed Devin Thomas to be able to attack the rim. That's a nice read by the big man. So Jabari Parker, Rodney Hood, Rashid Suleiman, Marshall Plumley, and Neil Jefferson all have two fouls apiece now for Duke. So you have to think at some point, if Wade continues to drive the basketball, there's a chance they can create some significant foul trouble as the second half moves on. Absolutely, but I do like what they did with Devin Thomas. They know he's not a good free throw shooter at only 51% on the year. You don't want to give him the layup. You want to force him to foul him and put him on the line. Uh, he got the long rebound by hitting the backboard first on his second free throw attempt. He 
goes right at Plumley, and Plumley stands his ground. And see, when Emil Jefferson is in there is when Devin Thomas really should try to play bully ball on the inside. Mason Marshall Plumley rather too tall on the interior to try to do that. He's so strong through his dress, able to stand you up when you're trying to take it off the bounce. Suleiman, another miss from three, but the soft tap from Tyler Thornton to Hood keeps it alive for Duke. Up zone here, chasing cutters through for Wake Forest. Parker in the paint. He'll go to the line. And Bob, I really think Duke needs more of that. When Jabari Parker's on the floor, we talked about earlier, there's no one, very few people in the country can defend him when he catches the basketball in the painted area or on the box. I think that's an opportunity for Duke to take advantage of his size and quickness on the interior to manufacture some buckets for Duke. Dalamoto called for his second foul. Parker trying to get to double figures for the 28th time this season. 12 double doubles, leads the ACC. And has already set a Duke freshman record. He's got over 20 points 15 times this year in the 29 games that Duke has played. Yeah, 12 rebounds per game over the last four as well. The thing I really love about him is how he recognized early that he wasn't knocking down the three ball especially as conference play began only 29 percent from three but he started to get in the gap shooting 15 footers and trying to score around the basket and his percentage has gone up as a result perfect at the line and he is in double figures to give duke the three-point lead high low action really worked well for Lake forest in the first half williams knocks down a three we're tied again. Suleiman, a little too much mustard on the pass, and Emil Jefferson couldn't hold on. So it's a Duke turnover and a chance for Wake Forest to take the lead back. Duke seems a little pensive on the offensive end, and it's a little strange when you have as many scoring weapons as they do. You almost wonder if, if, not from a coaching standpoint, but from a player standpoint, if they were looking past this game. They are out of sorts offensively. Well, there's a game that a few people have been talking about over the past couple of weeks, I think, coming on Saturday night. Shot clock under 10. Miller McIntyre, five to shoot. Down the lane with a finger roll. Won't go. Jabari Parker somehow found the loose ball. So good on the glass. And conference play leads the league in defensive rebounds as well. Suleiman along two. Connects. See, now that looked like Duke. Really smooth. Taking advantage of opportunities that are available. The defensive player dropped off Suleiman. Didn't even think about it. Stepped into a jump shot and knocks it down. Avanoff facing up on Jefferson. Miller McIntyre tries to drive it instead. Now Kavanaugh muscles his way to the goal. Too strong. I thought Kavanaugh should have taken the first one. He can knock down that 15-foot elbow jump shot. Hood to the corner to Suleiman. His second three of the second half. Duke's got a five-point lead, and Jeff Bezelik is furious with his team. Well, Bob, a lot of times when they catch the basketball, if you don't take the first good shot, it usually leads to a bad shot, as it did on that last possession. Kavanaugh should have taken that first shot, and now Duke gets off in transition and knocks down a three. Everybody's sprinting back, but you have to communicate. No one takes Suleiman in the corner. You can see that they're off balance in terms of their defensive balance and leads to a wide open three. Wake Forest can ill afford miss keys on the defensive end if they're hoping to beat Duke tonight. Suleiman didn't have a three in the first half. Neither did Rodney Hood, but they've combined for three threes in the first five minutes of the second half. And that has taken what was a three-point deficit for Duke at halftime, turned it into their largest lead. And how about the intensity from Jabari Parker on that little player huddle? You think the North Carolina game looming on Saturday night means a lot. This game obviously means something, and 
Maybe the switch has been flipped for Duke. It looks that way, and it starts with them on the defensive end. And when you have as many scoring weapons on the floor as they do, I'm surprised that they haven't pushed the tempo more because they have guys who can push it up and guys who can finish in transition. I'd like to see them push the pace, especially on, make, on missed shots and turnovers the rest of this game. Thomas finds a cutter. Dalamoto gets it to go. And that's where Jabari Parker cannot allow him to free run down the lane. You have to kind of bump him to slow down his momentum. Nice finish at the rim. How about that? Woo! Feet by Hood, missed the jam. Jabari Parker with a chance for a three-point play. That went from embarrassing to a chance for an old-fashioned three-point play for Duke on the same play. Wow, the missed and Jabari Parker, one of the best on the offensive class. He realizes that his Kansas, Arizona, Syracuse on the road and North Carolina at Chapel Hill. But they'll have a chance at Cameron on Saturday night to get some revenge as Parker can't complete the three-point play. So it stays a five-point game. But they piled up wins of late. Although they're only four and four in the league on the road, so. Wake's been a pretty good home team this season. This would be the signature win for Wake Forest if they can get it tonight. They've really done what they could do. They've not turned the basketball over as often that they did in the first encounter. And they've been able to scrap to come up with second possessions to keep themselves in this game. Danger time though for Wake Forest because Duke looks so much better and such a better rhythm now against the 2-3 zone than they did in the first half. Jefferson in the lane, no good. Here comes Devin Thomas out of traffic. Devin Thomas, number two, a little frustrated that he's not getting the basketball inside, but right now he's not working for position. Williams down the lane, offensive foul, says Roger Ayers. So Karan Williams called for the charge, and Emil Jefferson had position. And that's the one thing, I've been out of college for over 20 years, you have to know that Duke is one of the best teams that are helping on the weak side. And you have to know that and come to a jump stop and make a play. If he would have come to a jump stop, he could have dropped that underneath to Devin Thomas for an easy dunk. Second foul on Karan Williams. Suleiman tied up, got it back, gave it to Parker, and he'll go to the line again. Kavanaugh, it looks like, called for the foul. He can't believe it, but Michael Stevens says he got those harms extended out rather than maintaining that verticality. Let's take another look. I'll tell you what, it's so hard to do at times to maintain your verticality because when that guy jumps into your chest, your response is to bring it down. I thought he had good defensive position. I thought that should have been a no call. Well, you're right, you can make the argument that Parker jumped into his chest yes. while his arms were still straight up. Yes. Third foul, though, on Kavanaugh. So he and Devin Thomas now both have three. Front court foul trouble for Wake with 12.53 to go. Jabari Parker, usually a pretty good free throw shooter. He's not been able to knock him down here tonight. That one goes, and he now has 13. Largest lead for Duke, it's up to six. Makai can't score. Adalamoto kept it alive, here's Kavanaugh to the corner. Makai thought about a three. Leans in for two and gets the roll. That's where he's at his best. He can knock down a three-point shot, but when he's putting it on the deck and attacking the rim, that is a plus-plus for Wake Forest. Wake Forest now starting to switch everything on the perimeter, one through three. Some slip opportunities to be available for Duke. Suleiman can't hit, Makai flips it ahead. Madison Jones, nice. off for the finish by Miller McIntyre, and that lights up the crowd.
Wake Forest has to continue to play with pace on missed shots. They have guys who can get out and finish. They're pretty athletic on their wings. Emil Jefferson leans in. Too easy for Duke. And that sits them all back down. Yeah, Tyler Cavanaugh was too low on that one. When that basketball is at the top, you got to be about a three-quarter drape on the high side. He wasn't there creating an easy pass underneath. Basketball into Adalamoto. Adalamoto with a jump stop, and that's thrown away by Parker. Seven seconds on the shot clock for Wake Forest when we come back. Nearing the midway point of the second half, Duke by four. What does everything mean to you? With the Quicksilver cashback card from 52. Look at all these SEC teams on the bubble Mizzou, Arkansas, and Tennessee. We'll keep you up to date all night long. All right, Chris, thanks very much. There is Nebraska. Talk about an NCAA elimination game, part of the first four out, according to Joe Lenardi. Scoring inside is Adalamoto as we're back underway. It's a two-point game. And Indiana, if they can find a way to win that game, they're on the road on Saturday against a team that's already clinched the Big Ten in Michigan. Indiana wins that game. They might end up in Joe Lenardi's maybe at least last four out, if not first four in. Sometimes when you know you've already made it, you can have a little letdown emotionally, and Indiana might be able to pull that one out, but Yogi Ferrell is going to have to be extraordinary. Finally starting to get some help from Will Sheehy inside. Kavanaugh bumped by Jefferson. Jefferson's third. Well, first things first for the Hoosiers. They have to find a way to beat Nebraska tonight. <laughs> and for Nebraska, yeah. that game equally important. They yes. might go from the first four out to the last four in and move up in bracketology if they get that win. So many good teams poised to make a move. I would include Florida State in that as well. Just came off a big win against Pitt. And they survived against Boston College last night. That's a brick tossed up by Miller McIntyre. But a foul called on Rodney Hood. Wow. Trying to wall off Kavanaugh. That's his third. Tyler Kavanaugh has really been working hard on the offensive glass. And what he does when that shot goes up, he really makes hard body contact with you and seals you inside. And that's how he's been able to create some foul opportunities inside. Kavanaugh, nice move inside. Thanks at home. Bob, I love it when bigs catch the ball on the inside and make quick, decisive moves. Tyler Kavanaugh executing beautifully on that one. Jabari Parker has to get a touch here. Instead, it's Hood left yes. alone at the foul line. And against that 2-3 zone, those opportunities have been available all night long. Rodney Hood, the perfect guy to put at that ACC line. Kavanaugh spins through a double team, stripped away by Quinn Cook. Great hands by the point guard from Washington. Good, a nice job of walling up to take that initial thrust away. And now Cook turns it over. Great hands back the other way by Mackay. He's fouled by Hood, crashes into the stanchion. And so it will be free throws for Travis Mackay. I'm glad that thing is padded. Wow. Look how they continue Wake Forest to be so scrappy. Cook has to know not to dribble into that double team, but credit Wake Forest. They've been active with their hands, but I'm so glad that thing is padded. Otherwise, he would have been hurt on that play. Now, Marshall Plumley is up at the scorer's table. One can only assume he's coming on for Rodney Hood, because that's four fouls on Hood with nine and a half minutes to go. And that's a big loss because Rodney Hood is the one guy. They have a few now with Jabari Parker as well, who's been really operating well at that free throw line area against that 2-3 zone, coming up with some big buckets for Duke. It's a big night for Travis McCoy as well. He has started all 124 games in his career here at Wake Forest. Number two in games played, Tim Duncan played 127 games. So he's had a terrific career here. And what a way to cap senior night if you can find a way to beat Duke. He's never beaten Duke. The Blue Devils have won eight in a row in this series. Wake Forest hasn't won a game against Duke since 2009. Plumlee 
Offensive rebound and a foul called on Madison Jones. Duke has really struggled from the three-point line. Now five of 18 from the strike. Because they're not shooting it as well, Bob, I'd like to see them get some dribble penetration, Duke, against that 2-3 zone. When they've been able to do it, they've been able to kick it to an open player for a three, or they've been able to dish it inside. Jabari Parker, a recipient of a couple baskets from that play. Now it's Parker in the post calling for it. Suleiman can't get it to him. The guards wait too long to make that pass, and as a former big guy, I get frustrated in watching it. I, I'm sensing your bitterness. Oh. It's not becoming. Oh, I'm sorry. By the way, I'm sorry. I'm just not backing myself. Sorry. A long three goes down for Andre Dawkins. His first triple, and the lead pushed back up to six. Andre Dawkins coming to this game was one for nine from the three point strike over the last three games. That'll give him some confidence. A guy who can really go on a roll. So Wake Forest is going to have to pay attention and know where he is on the offensive end. Plumley called for the foul. Each team now with five team fouls in the second half. He is so good moving without the basketball. And that was a really nice pick by Marshall Plumley at the top to create a little extra separation for him to knock that shot down. You have to be careful with Dawkins. He can knock down about three or four very quickly. Nice decision on the pass by Tyler Thornton as well. He's a terrific role player. And nice pass whipped to the corner. McCaffrey gets the three. Great look from Miller McIntyre. Wake Forest has been patient against the pressure, and in their patience, they've been able to find open guys. A kick called on Travis McKay as Suleiman tried to dribble through traffic. Three-point game, under eight to go here at Wake Forest. 32 home games as well, and the kids have basically been camping out in Krzyzewskiville since <laughs> August for the tickets. Yeah. Well, the key against North Carolina, you cannot allow them to dominate the offensive board. So Duke's going is a little susceptible in that area. There's going to have to be better at dominating the defensive glass. Seven on the shot clock. Suleiman to the corner. Thornton for three. In and out. Plumley an offensive rebound. Blocked inside by Devin Thomas. Bob Wake Forest is going to have to be careful and not over help because when they do so it leads to open shots but that's a really good reaction there by Devin Thomas recognizing that Marshall Plumley doesn't have a lot of lift and he was able to get to it. Suleiman no good another offensive rebound for Plumley. Four points seven rebounds for Plumley. Check that six points now for Plumley to go along with seven boards. He's been really playing well over the last three games. Four points, six rebounds, two block shots. And we talked about if Duke wants to get back to another Final Four, he's going to have to be huge for them on the interior. Adalamoto, floater comes up short, gets his own miss in traffic, wrestles it away, and a foul call. How scrappy has Wake Forest been tonight? I mean, every 50-50 ball, they've been on the offensive glass, really doing a nice job of controlling those things that they can, and they've not turned the basketball over like they did the last time these two teams met. Next foul puts Duke over the limit. That's team foul number six, as Thornton's called for that personal. Kavanaugh checks back in. Tell you what, though, Bob, the concern for me with Wake Forest, even as they get into the bonus or even double bonus, they don't shoot their free throws well at all. Kavanaugh up, just off the rim, but fouled by Plumley. Tyler Kavanaugh is ninth in the ACC, though, at shooting foul shots. He's at 80%. So this is the guy you want on the line if you're Wake. Yeah, that's a nice little cross screen underneath, creating the separation. Marshall Plumley coming over as quickly as he could, but couldn't quite get in good defensive posture. Nice call by the referee. That's the fourth foul on Plumley. So Emil Jefferson will come back in. He's got three, but Plumley and Rodney Hood both now on the bench with four. And this is where I think Wake Forest has to attack the rim because now with Plumley out of the game, you don't have a rim protector on the interior. I think they can attack. 
Emil Jefferson on the interior. Up zone right now for Wake Forest. Thornton with the ball fake sets up Parker. Tough fadeaway. NBA shot from the baseline for Jabari Parker. Dirk Nowitzki is, I mean, he's got all the game, Bob. I mean, all the counters as well. What a high degree of difficulty that shot was. Makai from the corner. No good. Long rebound. Devin Thomas called for a push in the back. Tell you what, though, Bob, as a big, it's so hard not to. So let's see, number two, yeah, they have to make that call. I mean, was it a dislodge? No, but it did create an advantage for Devin Thomas to come up with that offensive rebound. That's another good call by the crew. He's got four, he stays in the game. So Jeff Bezdelic, at least for now, rolls the dice. Whereas when the key players for Duke got four, Mancheshevsky went right to the bench. Two three matchup zone. Nice drive. Oh, Parker threw it to nowhere. Makai stepped on the end line, and I'm not sure he needed to. Yeah, Jefferson was expecting Parker to shoot that basketball, but that's why you have to make sure that you keep your eyes up and watching the ball handler at all times. Could have been an easy layup for Jefferson. Well, was Makai there saving a ball that would have been out on Duke had he let it go? Without did that, a doubt. Did that hit a Wake Forest hand? Yeah, without a doubt. It did not hit a Wake Forest hand. I think he was just responding to the play. That's a bad break for Wake Forest. Jefferson double teamed in the corner. And a timeout called by Mike Krzyzewski from the bench on the other side. It's a good timeout call because that was going to be a travel. <laughs> Some kind of turnover. 5.56 to go. It's a five-point game. Back to 1906. That was the first meeting. And in 1906, when Duke and Wake Forest played, that was the first game in the history of either program. Wow. So they've been playing for a while, and this literally is the start of both of these basketball programs playing each other. Yeah, Wake Forest has been scrappy. They have they have nine turnovers now, but those turnovers haven't led to a lot of points as they did in the first encounter. Suleiman finds Parker underneath. Bob, we were saying earlier, when Duke's been able to get dribble penetration against that matchup zone, they've been able to find guys on the interior. Rashid Suleiman is one of the best at attacking off the bounce. Thomas fouled by Parker. So that will be a one and one team foul number seven on Duke and Parker with his third. This is really good execution. We talked about the dribble drive and credit Parker. You want to be able to move behind the zone because the guys don't know where you are. Beautiful delivery by Suleiman and the finish by Parker. Fifty one percent at the line, but the front end of the one and one goes for Devin Thomas. The last time he was at the line. Mm -hmm. His second attempt hit the backboard first, so it's an adventure when Devin Thomas shoots free throws. That looked pretty good. Yeah, it did. It did. You know what he's missing? Just a little bit of wrist flex when he picks the basketball up. Because sometimes if it's late that way, he creates almost like a slingshot action where he can pick that basketball free really hard off the basket. He can talk to his sister. All right. Melissa Thomas of Maryland should be on Parker. ACC Female Player of the Year, and now a foul is called on Parker for bowling over Kavanaugh. Left, That's his fourth. Yeah, left hand to the face of Kavanaugh. They may take a look at it to see if it were an el if it was an elbow. Watch this. So Rodney Hood comes back in. He has four. Parker sits down with four. We talked about it basically from the midway point of the first half, but at some point you figured as early as the fouls were piling up, Duke would get in some foul trouble. Can Wake Forest take advantage? It's a good sign when you get Devin Thomas, your worst free throw shooter on the team, making his free throws. 
blocking foul called on Tyler Thorpe. Now you get Travis McKay at the line, who's an 80% free throw shooter. So, so far, <laughs> the foul game is working in Wake Forest's favor. That's the third on Thornton. Tenth team foul called against Duke. So now it's the double bonus. He's put up terrific career numbers, but his numbers have dipped as he gets to his senior year. As a sophomore, he averaged 16 a game. Last year, 13 and a half a game as a junior. This year, only 11 points a game. But we talked about it earlier. He's had to play the three yes. instead of the four. A part of that, he also has some better players around him, so he doesn't need to carry as much of the offensive load. But I tell you what, on senior night, he looks fantastic tonight. A one possession game with under five minutes to go. Jefferson in trouble. And it's out off Duke. Great hands by Karan Williams. A deflection that Tyler Thornton couldn't handle. It's a Duke turnover. But you have to know if you're Duke, the last two possessions, when they've thrown that basketball in the corner, especially to Emil Jefferson, they are double teaming the corner and taking away the reversal pass at the top. You have to stay away from the corner unless you're going to catch an attack. McCon lost his balance. Possession arrow, Wake Forest. The officials will call it a held ball, and it will stay with Wake. Bob, when Wake Forest has been patient in their half-court attack, they've been able to find some wide-open shots. I don't think taking someone one-on-one -on -one off the bounce is their game. It's a one-point game as Tyler Kavanaugh hits a step-back jumper. Gave a little jab step, creating the room to get that shot off. Suleiman in and out for three. A chance for Wake Forest to take the lead. Leans in on Hood, and the Demon Deacons have the lead back. Well, Rodney Hood is in foul trouble. Kavanaugh making some good reads to take him off the bounce. Tyler Kavanaugh, if you give him any room, he can knock that shot down. He's got range out to the three-point line, but I love his recognition on the floor, recognizing that Hood has four fouls, can give a whole lot of resistance because Duke can ill afford to lose Rodney Hood. Tyler Kavanaugh getting it done here for Georgia for Wake Forest. It's an eight-nothing run for Wake. Six of those eight points have been scored since Jabari Parker went to the bench with four fouls. Again, Hood, Parker, and Marshall Plumley, all with four apiece. Now Parker comes back. So with three and a half minutes to go, Marshall Plumley still stays on the bench, but Mike shashevsky has got his two stars out there, each with four fouls. And I think you have to do that right now because now you have your two best scorers on the floor. You can put Rodney Hood at the free throw line area, and Jabari Parker's had a lot of success, not only catching it in the post, but working behind the 2-3 zone to get some baskets when they've been able to get to the penetration. Well, Suleiman gets penetration here. Pass deflected. Nice tip by Williams. Crossing over and finishing is Tony Miller McIntyre. Wake Forest doing a phenomenal job defensively of coming to the basketball, making Duke have to make tough passes. Quinn Cook blocked, rejected by Devin Thomas. And Williams says, slow it down.
Bob, the weak side for Wake Forest against the dribble penetration on the last three plays has been extraordinary. Devin Thomas, no good, but there's Kavanaugh with the follow. Mike Krzyzewski only has one timeout left. At what point will he feel, feel the need to call it? They have to get that basketball in the hood. Three short by Thornton. And see, the difference now is they're starting to rely on the jump shot versus attacking Wake Forest off the bounce. The two best players on the floor for Duke have to touch the rock. Quinn Cook thought he had a pocket picked instead of foul call. Free throws when we come back as Wake Forest looks to add to the lead. Extra effort. Lead, 35 seconds left. Bob Lafonso? Well, Chris, it's a five-point lead now for Wake Forest in the midst of a 12-0 run. And it's an automatic two shots the rest of the way for Wake as Duke is over the double bonus limit. And Cody Miller-McIntyre adds to the run. Well, we've talked about how scrappy Wake Forest has been. Coming up with second chance opportunities. They have 22 second chance points in this game. A lot of time left. It is a six-point advantage. Puck is open. Hood instead drives it, flips it outside. Corner ball movement to Cook. He can't hit the three. Again, Bob, I think you have to sacrifice those open three-point shots and get some dribble penetration. It's five on Hood. So that foul called on Rodney Hood. And he is done for the night. Fouls out with 16 points. And Travis McKay will shoot the automatic two. Well, Wake has been so patient in the half court execution, finding open guys on the perimeter. And this guy, Tyler Kavanaugh, is able to size you up. You give him space, and he's been able to take advantage of the mismatch, knowing that Rodney Hood had four fouls at the time, couldn't give any resistance. It's been the hustle plays, the effort plays for Wake Forest that's gotten them this lead. Dude. Doesn't turn the basketball over very often. They have 12 turnovers for 13 points in this game. Well, no team in the ACC shoots the three better than Duke. And they might need some threes down the stretch. Suleiman out of control, turns it over. McCaw with a nice touch. The trailer, the finger roll, goaltending. Karan Williams score the bucket. And that extends the lead to 10. It's a party here in Winston-Salem. And this has all come apart for Duke in the last five minutes. Trying to create at times something out of nothing and again, Wake Forest so active with their hands. Again, numbers, the alley oh! Unable to finish was McCoy. Getting a little greedy there, Wake Forest. Back the other way, line drive three won't go for Dawkins. Offensive rebound, quick to the corner. Suleiman tries a triple and gets fouled. He kicked his legs out on that one, Bob. I'm not so sure about that one. Well, whether it's a veteran move or a bad play by Tyler Cavanaugh or both, 46 seconds to go and a chance with the clock stop for Suleiman to go to the line and shoot three. Foul trouble for Duke really hurt them. They struggled early against the 2-3 zone to find their rhythm offensively, but then they were able to tack off the bounce and get some easy ones. In the last two minutes of this game, they've gone completely away from getting the basketball into Jabari Parker's hands, and I think that's come to hurt Duke. Watch on the closeout here. Kicks his right foot out. Little kid in play action there from the corner. Referee bit on it. Duke has gone five minutes without scoring. And the student section is already warming up for a court storming. Is that a fine in the ACC yet? Well, if it is, get ready to pay it if you're Wake Forest, <laughs> because the kids have already left their seats and formed in the aisles. I guess for a team that's 1-8 in their last nine games, mm -hmm. if you beat Duke, the fourth-ranked team in the country at home, to close out senior night, it's about as good as it gets for the Demon Deacons. So there'll be a party on the court if Wake Forest can hold on. And now Andre Dawkins fouls Kavanaugh. And again, I think the 
What's really hurt Duke is they've not gotten the basketball in the hands of their best two players, Rodney Hood, Jabari Parker, Parker especially down in the post area. Wake Forest, and we've said, even people throughout the country, no team has a person who can guard Jabari Parker one-on-one. -on -one. I feel like they've missed out on some easy opportunities. Duke, five minutes without a basket? That's insane. And things really started to fall apart for the Blue Devils when Parker picked up his fourth and went to the bench. Mm -hmm. That was a crucial two minutes that Wake Forest took advantage of. Here's Suleiman. Time winding down. Suleiman will drive it and go for the easy two. And Mike Krzyzewski will call Duke's final timeout. So we have just over 40 seconds to play. Wake by eight and a chance hen fouls. And this is the run that Wake Forest has put together late second half. They were terrific in being patient against Duke's pressure defense, finding open shots, recognizing when guys were in foul trouble and attacking off the bounce, but the active hands creating turnovers off a Duke team that doesn't turn it over very often, and when they would come over and over help, creating some offensive rebounds on the weak side, and the scrappy defense has led to several baskets in transition. Wake Forest just out hustling, out toughing, and out scrapping Duke in the last five minutes of this game. How concerned do you think a Blue Devil fan with their inconsistency this second half of the season would be as you move towards March? Yeah, again, we talked about for them to make a deep run, Marshall Plumley was going to have to be the guy that anchored the defense. And he got in a little foul trouble tonight. And so Wake Forest was able to attack them not only off the bounce, but on the offensive glass as well. So again, for them to make a deep tournament run, it's going to be on the shoulders of Marshall Plumley. But Bob, aside from that, when you have two elite players on the floor, foul trouble or not, you have to make sure that they're getting touches every time down the floor. That didn't happen in the last five minutes when Jabari Parker was on the floor, when Rodney Hood was on the floor, and at times when they were on the floor together. Wake Forest fans have seen this before. Wake unranked, and either Duke or North Carolina as a top five team, and Wake pulling off the upset here at home, most recently back in 2008. But it was home here in 2009. That's the last time Wake Forest beat Duke head to head. So it's been eight losses in a row. And it's a 10 point lead trying to break that streak. Quinn Cook goes to the basket. Blocked by McCott. Tracked down by Suleiman. Forces a three. In and out. Offensive rebound. Parker who flushes. 28 seconds remaining. And McCott's foul. And Bob, that block shot at the rim was really indicative of how the whole second half has been. The scrappy play of Wake Forest here. They recognize they have a 10-point lead, but they're still not giving up on possessions. Weak side coming over. Their weak side has been terrific in this last five minutes. It was also back in that 2008-2009 season, the last time that Wake Forest was able to have kind of the North Carolina sweep with wins over Carolina, Duke, and NC State all in the same season. And they're on the verge of doing that if they hold on and win this game tonight. And they are looking good with 27 seconds to go. It's a 10 point lead. Duke needs a miracle. And how about the night Travis McKay has had on senior night? He certainly gave his team a big lift offensively. Suleiman. Offensive foul. Wave it off. He tried to go coast to coast, but Suleiman's called for the offensive foul. Well, a lot of offensive players on the bounce use that inside hand to slough off or to shield off the defensive player. And I thought he extended it a little too far. Watch his left hand inside, or in this case, his right hand. A little push there. That's a great call by the ref. And the Blue Devils will wave the white flag. On senior night, Travis McKay is going to finally get a chance to beat Duke. Suleiman comes up and picks the pocket of Makai, lobs it to Parker, who loses it out of bounds. Eight seconds to go. Duke bluffed, waving the white flag. <laughs> it looks like they will now, though. And now Makai will get the curtain call, as will Perron Williams, the two seniors. That's special. But Makai especially.
We told you the student section was in court storming formation. Here they come as Wake Forest has upset Duke. Coming to this game, we said they really needed to protect the basketball. They did that. They needed to scrap and hustle and come up with extra possessions. They were able to dominate the offensive glass. They didn't turn the basketball over. And it was the fight and toughness defensively creating offensive opportunities for Wake Forest. That was the difference in this game over the last five minutes. It has been a dismal second half of the season for Wake Forest. They were 1-8 in their last nine games before pulling off this upset tonight. But Demon Deacon fans get to celebrate a 10-point upset win over Duke. And congratulations to Travis McKay. Terrific effort on senior night. Now it's time for Colorado and Stanford.